that type of truss rod. Um, so to answer your question, is there anything you can do about it? No, unfortunately. Um, use the more stable guitar, <laughs> especially for outdoor gigs. Um, any other questions? Your wood, uh, do you have trouble finding rules wood now? Yes and no. Um, almost brought some because we have rosewood we can't use. <laughs> so what happened with rosewood is there's lots of rosewood. You um, say they're running up? Yeah. Um, so uh, rosewood in India is, is growing to shade tea trees. And so um, it's, it's, it's planted, it's responsibly harvested, um, and there's, there's just tons available for guitar use. Um, the problem became in Asia where uh, it was typical for royalty to have bedroom furniture that was um, made out of redwood, not necessarily roadwood, rosewood, but just a redwood. Um, as the middle class um, uh, became more prominent in Asia, uh, everybody wanted these red bedroom sets. And so rosewood was one of the woods that they used, Babingo was another. And the use of, of those two woods uh, went up like, I think a factor of 19 times within, within five years. And uh, so that put the brakes on, on trading those types of woods. Okay, now, I know now, uh, if you order a guitar from the States, and it's got rosewood in it, the manufacturer has to get paperwork in order to get it across the Canadian border. And you have to have paperwork to receive it. Yeah. And if, now, uh, there's how things are supposed to work and then there's how they actually work. And uh, so it depends, like every country, even though it's a worldwide organization called CITES that came up with this rule, um, it's actually up to the individual countries to how they want to enforce it. So some countries are going to be, yeah, whatever. And other countries are going to steal your guitar and you know, burn yeah. it on you. Um, as it stands now, um, if you're not selling your guitar, you should be able to go from Canada to the US with your Rosewood guitar and back. And it, it's not a problem. And you won't need paperwork. Um, you just have to prove to them that you're not Sharing it down to sell it, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Fender and Martin and Taylor have all you know, freaked out and said, you're going to kill an entire industry to try and save um, the, the Rosewood, which is, you know, the intent of the law is, is good. Um, but they're killing off an entire industry um, of guitar makers with this whole thing. So they're going to review it in 2019. And hopefully they'll they'll make an exception for musical instruments because they weren't the problem. It was bedroom furniture that was the problem. Yeah. Um, and so a, I, a lot of guys just switched over to walnut instead. Walnut's an excellent wood. It's not as um, tough as as rosewood, um, but it's an excellent sounding wood. We've made necks out of walnut for years, and and uh, it's it sounds beautiful. Um, this is pow ferro. You can have a closer look at this uh, in a few minutes. Um, it looks like rosewood, but it's got the feel of ebony. Uh, it's a really nice wood. And it's also more stable than, than uh, either rosewood or ebony. Um, but yeah, uh, I, would still, I would still feel a little bit uncomfortable about traveling with a rosewood neck guitar, a rosewood fingerboard guitar, but um, I know lots of people that do, and, and they've been fine. Um, I also know people that have imported rosewood with no paperwork and they've gotten away with it. So it, it really is kind of this, all of a sudden there's all these rules, everybody's freaking out. Uh, yeah, well in the States it's a problem. There's a, a, a guitar manufacturer in the States, they actually got raided. Gibson, yeah. Yeah. Took all the rosewood that they, they had sitting there for like collecting for five years. Yeah. and. And from what I understand, it wasn't really Gibson's fault. Um, it was whoever the supplier was. Um, well, some of the wood they had was there long before the rule came in. Sure, yeah, absolutely. They took that too. Took it too, yeah. It, uh, that was sort of the last thing Gibson needed at that point. <laughs> um, but uh, it really, you know, it really wasn't Gibson doing something wrong. It was, and I'm not even sure if the supplier did something wrong. 
um, possibly. I mean, some of these woods, they go from supplier to supplier to supplier. It's really hard to trace where they actually came from and was it responsibly harvested. Um, even in Canada, there's wood poaching. Um, quilted maple has gotten so expensive that there are people that in, in BC that have farmland that have a, a maple tree that's... Yeah, and all of a sudden it's gone. All of a sudden it's gone. There's a bunch of sawdust where the tree used to be. Um, so, speaking of quilted maple, we, we buy, we pay a lot of money for quilted maple. We buy it from uh, only a couple of sources and, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, none of these, none of the wood that we bought has been poached. Uh, I think that's more, that's more going to uh, the black market than the, than the internet market. Okay. Um, any other questions uh, before we move on? Cool. Well, um, why don't we take a break from from um, the setup end of things? Uh, I'm going to hang around, and if you have any other questions, um, we, can, we can talk directly. We have a bunch of maps set up here. Uh, we have uh, new bases. This is the very first um, D-Bird standard, which is our production model of the D-Bird. Uh, this one, best in show at NAM. Um, a couple of months ago, uh, it's bigger brother of the DC Custom, which is made in Saskatoon, the best base of the year in the UK. Um, try it out, uh, see what all the buzz is about. Actually, I will talk about it really quickly. Um, this was this was a hard hard design to work on. I mean, we all know where it started. It started with the T-Brew. Um, problem with this body design is is the center of gravity is is quite neckward. And so to solve that, um, move the strap pins, uh, instead of here, the strap pin has been moved inboard, and then this is sort of been morphed out to uh, allow the strap pin to be pushed as far as the headstock as possible. And when you're doing things like that, um, like a half an inch makes a huge difference in, in terms of balance. So if you've got an instrument that's on the strap, it's not balancing properly, you know, um, take it to a tech. There's things that can be done. You can put a longer screw in and maybe some washers and just extend that strap pin out um, a quarter inch, half inch. That might be all it takes to take an instrument that does this on a strap to an instrument that stays like this. And not only are you holding your left arm out for three hours a night, but you're, if you're having to support the weight of your neck, um, that's not going to be uh, good for your shoulder. Um, all right, uh, we have the new NG3 over here. We've got some uh, NG2s and some combustions, uh, some combustion threes, and we've got several amps. I'm going to fire up these uh, videos again so that um, so that we got some noise going on, and and feel free to try stuff out. And any other questions, I'll be around. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.